Josh Frydenberg is Australia's Treasurer. Thanks for being with us. Nice to be with you, Lee. No hard feelings at the RBA Governor for raising interest rates during an election campaign? Well, the Governor and the Board of the Reserve Bank are independent of government and they take decisions based on the economic data available to them. And they've made it very clearly in their statement today that it's been international factors that have been driving up inflation. And they have moved as other central banks around the rest of the world have moved. In the United States, uh, Federal Reserve has lifted the cash rate by 25 basis points. In the United Kingdom, they've lifted it by 65 basis points. Uh, in, uh, in Canada, um, they've lifted it by 75 basis points and in New Zealand by 125 basis points. So this is the normalisation of monetary policy that comes with the worst of the pandemic being behind us, just as we normalise fiscal policy by bringing to an end that emergency economic support like JobKeeper, the cash flow boost, the COVID disaster payments and other initiatives that we had in place this... when the pandemic was very, very bad. This line that the coalition's running, that it's due to international factors that are beyond your control, that it shouldn't be viewed through a political lens. These were arguments that you never accepted from Labor through the global financial crisis and yet you're trotting them out to defend yourselves now. Well, I'm just telling you that the cold, hard reality that the world is seeing higher inflation. In fact, just a year ago, the IMF was forecasting inflation of around 3.2%. Now it's saying global inflation is 7.4%. That's the reality in both the war in Ukraine, which has seen a spike in fuel prices and other commodity prices like wheat, as well as the COVID pandemic, which has disrupted supply chains, have has, an, has had an impact both globally on, on prices, but also domestically here and that's why we provided the cost of living relief in the budget just a matter of weeks ago while with well, the halving of the fuel excise the top up of the four hundred and twenty dollars the lower middle income tax offset and the two hundred and fifty dollar payments well, and the more affordable medicines all of which are helping australian households that's all increased government spending when the rba is pulling levers to try to limit the flow of money into the economy why is the government acting contrary to that and promising further spending well, Treasury were asked a very direct question of budget estimates, whether the government's economic support, like those uh, initiatives to ease the cost of living, would drive up inflation materially, and they said no. And so that's a very clear statement from Treasury. In fact, we know from the budget that the halving of the fuel excise will actually decrease inflation. But we also know that the number one topic around the kitchen tables of Australians right now is cost of living pressures. And that's why we moved ahead of this interest rate decision to actually provide that cost of living relief. And if you're a family with two cars that fill it once a week, you're $30 better off. And if you're one of those millions of pensioners or carers or veterans, you've just now got $250 in your pocket well, to spend on this point, uh, to meet some of these high pressures. On this point about cost of living, your government's been in power for nine years. As you point out, things now cost a lot more than they have at any other time. Wages have stayed, sta stayed stagnant. Debt has blown out. How does any of that deserve another term in office? Well, we've actually seen electricity prices down by up to 10% in the last two years. They doubled under the Labor Party. We've made initiatives around childcare, which is going to see 250,000 families, uh, more than $2,000 a year better off with two or more children in childcare. And we've obviously provided very significant tax relief of more than $40 billion since the pandemic began. Yeah, but all I'm pointing out that for the average person, your life's got pressures. harder. Well, in terms of the interest rates, they are normalising just as fiscal policy is normalising. It's completely unrealistically to expect that a cash rate at just 10 basis points would stay there indefinitely. Uh, what, what we do know around the rest of the world is other central banks are moving just as the Australian central bank has moved. When you're campaigning in your own seat of Kooyong, how much of an issue is people's personal dislike of Scott Morrison? Look, they're focused on economic issues, the economic plan, the climate change is a big issue. Are they focused in my on how much they like or don't I... like Scott Morrison? Look, that's not the issue. The issue is what can the government do for them to make their lives better? I do get a lot of people stopping me on the street, whether they're small business owners or households, thanking the Morrison government for standing with them during the pandemic and Victorians saw more economic support on a per capita basis than any other state because they had the longest lockdown of any other state. So we've been right there with the people of Kuyong, with the people of Victoria, indeed with the people of Australia from day one of this pandemic and now we're coming out of it in a stronger position than nearly any other country in the world.
The member for Warringah's Ali Stegall has already said that she wouldn't be interested in negotiating with Scott Morrison to form a government in the event of a hung parliament. If the election result is a hung parliament, should Scott Morrison stand aside to allow a new leader such as yourself an opportunity to negotiate? Scott Morrison is the Prime Minister, he's the leader of the party and obviously we're working to win government. Um, I don't think that is a reasonable question to be honest Lee, uh, because what we do know is if we have a hung parliament um, then that will be chaos and confusion and we do know that in so-called independents like the ones running in Kuyong uh, as former members of the Labor Party will join with the Labor Party in the event of a hung parliament. So anyone thinking in one of these so-called teal seats which have Liberal Party members of voting for a so-called independent will get the Labor Party and the chaos and the confusion of a hung parliament and we've seen that horror movie before it hasn't worked out well for Australia and it makes those big decisions we need to take about our economy and national security all the more harder. If an election does clean out your moderate Liberals in inner city seats but you're left standing would you want to be the leader of that Liberal Party? <laughs> Well, look, I, I'm trying to ensure that the coalition is returned, Lee, uh, and that means all my colleagues who are, who are running uh, in those teal seats and beyond are right across the country. And the Prime Minister and I are prosecuting the economic argument against a Labor Party that has no economic plan, a leader of the Labor Party who's never delivered a budget, never held a Treasury portfolio, can't remember the cash rate, can't remember the unemployment rate, and is certainly not fit to be the Prime Minister of Australia. Josh Frydenberg, thank you. Thank you.